are in our brand new FOs. Yes. That's really fun. Mm. That's something to talk about. Yes. Ready? Sure. Okay. Oh, we're already recording. Oh, Look okay. Well, edit out the first 30 seconds. <laughs> or maybe not, because it could be funny. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm Joanne from Magpie's Cottage. I'm Amy. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I hit record when yeah. I turned it on. Oh, that's the way life is sometimes. Yeah, yep. So Yeah, it's kind of fun. Like, do you ever watch Chelsea Pearl's podcast? Uh -uh. Oh, they leave it on while they're getting the whole thing set up, running around and everything, <laughs> and her husband's talking. And, yeah, it, it's kind of funny watching that beginning. Okay. So. Well, we were running around, too, getting things ready. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so as we might as well talk about it since we already mentioned it. We're wearing our FOs. For January. Yeah, I finished my sweater. I love this thing. Yeah, I'll stand up. Okay. It's um, plain raglan, and then I uh, added some little pearl bumps up here just so it was a little bit of interest. Not a boring yoke. And then I put a little eye cord on the edge of the ribbing on all of the edges. I love that eye cord. Now mm -hmm. you can do an eye cord cast on too, right? Yes. Yes, you just Well, I was like, thinking cuz you inspired me. It's all like backwards. Me. Yeah. Yeah. No, you inspired me in this just come up with this plan for sweater and mm -hmm. you came up with the plan for sweater because you wanted to use that yarn. Right. This I dyed myself with red onion skins. Mm -hmm. And it's got silk in it, like 20% silk. Yeah. 80% and it has uh, a really nice wool. sheen, obviously. You can't yeah, sheen it's on very that. variegated. Yeah, because it just grabs the the color differently. So I'm I'm liking it. Yeah, me too. So, I mean, I just I just think it's a great color and whatever. Uh -huh. So it's cool and customized to me. I don't like full length sleeves, so they're just below the elbow. Mm -hmm. Well, see, and I've got this set, and it's not really a set, but it's this collection of. Um, Stonehenge Crazy that I bought mm -hmm. at ZK last year. And I mm -hmm. want to knit a sweater out of this. And my intent was to have this absolutely crazy sweater. Mm -hmm. So I started, you know, th thinking about this sweater. I like the I-cord edge, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know if with crazy you'd see any kind of pearl bumps or if I did oh, something like right, that. Right, I right. don't think you'd see it. So what I want is kind of a funnel neck, but not real high funnel. So mm -hmm. I can do, accomplish that with ribbing. But I thought edging it with an I-cord might be kind of mm -hmm. fun. So then I thought, okay, a little bit of a funnel, I-cord edge, completely top-down raglan. I will go long sleeve, or at least three-quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay. My issue started as I'm, you know, kind of inventing this sweater in my head. Then I thought, hmm, what am I going to do about sleeves because if I use my skeins of crazy, they don't match. Right. So I'm going to have to be crazy. They'd have to be crazy too. And then, mm -hmm. well, with crazy, you never know how long your color runs are going to be. Right. Um, so this is going to be one crazy sweater. I don't know uh -huh. when I'll get to casting yeah. it on, but um, I, I was kind of thinking I would get it to it this winter yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that might be the March sweater. Okay. For the bones of this and a lot of my sweaters, I use that and Buds. And the that's, book you know. of Top Down Sweaters. That's my yeah. favorite book. Yeah, and I think I'm going to drag mine out because mm -hmm. that will give me at least, I won't have to do all the math. Yeah. You know, um, she, that book is laid out so well as she does all the math for you. So mm -hmm. since I won't have to do the math, um, and, and my, the crazy is a sport weight, but I think I can knit it also at this a DK. This is a sport weight also. Yeah, well, and I'm, but I'm thinking the crazy I can knit at a DK weight. Well, they just tell you what's your gauge. Is it four, you know, or five, true. six, seven? I'll just swatch with a needle yeah. I like. I right. love knitting on fives and sixes. That's what mm -hmm. always seems to fit yeah. my hand best. Size, you know, comfort-wise. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll just take out some crazy. Take out a five, take out yeah. a six, which decide which one I like the fabric. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm not going to knit the stupid swatch in a round. I'll just knit it flat. I do too most of the time. Um, Except for the swatch for my next one. I did knit in the round and leave that gap and then cut it because I'm going to do it helical. Right. And I wanted to see what the striping would look like. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I'll show you that later when we get to our whips. Okay. 
So what do you have on that you just okay, finished? Okay, I just finished this. This is a test that I did for Laura Ayler. Okay, it is a big, cozy hug. Uh -huh. um, I'm gonna hold, try to hold up an inch. Okay, so there is this garter, on the diagonal, garter um, pattern kind of going. And then you've got the, the contrast in there, and that's created by some uh, slip stitches. Easy, easy knit. If you can knit, you can purl, and you can mm -hmm. slip a stitch, you can do it. Um, I started this, uh, I want to say around January 2nd, and finished it mm -hmm. retreat weekend. And I love this thing. I finally got it blocked. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it took my entire dining room table. And okay. then I've got it clasped here with a shawl cuff. And oh. I found this on Etsy. You yes. didn't have any brown ones. I needed brown with this. Yeah. You know? And I love it. Yeah, my browns it. were all light brown. Yeah. yeah. You know what this one is? with, And what they're doing a lot of them, they buy old belts. Yeah. 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 So it's this shawl cuff. I found it on Etsy. Love it. And all I did mm -hmm. was I took it. The, the, the main point, all right? Mm -hmm. Centered that in the front, went around underneath that with my tails, so there that's why mm -hmm. they're sitting here. Yeah, there's some, you do a bigger section of the burgundy, and I wanted that in front. I did fuss with this a little bit this morning to see what I was gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so I kind of tucked those under, but they're, they're peeking out, and then I've got the other tail going back here. Mm -hmm. And so both tails are caught in the cuff, plus the bulk. So it keeps the bulk in one place. Sure. I never owned a shawl cuff. Okay. Okay. But when I saw this shawl um, modeled mm -hmm. by Laura's niece, who's really cute, by the way, um, she models all her of her knitwear, and um, she had it on with a shawl cuff. Okay. And I thought, oh, wow, I like that. Mm -hmm. So... I went on Etsy and found these. Okay. And, and the thing Good. was, is I literally ordered it. When did I order it? I don't know. It must have been Tuesday or Wednesday. It came yesterday. Wow. And I, I wasn't expecting it, you know, from the tracking stuff. Uh -huh. I wasn't expecting it until today. And okay. I go, when it came yesterday, I go, yes, now I know what I'm wearing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I got kind of excited about that. Good. Okay, so that's one FO okay. for January. We have FO number two, the most fun socks ever. I love these socks. I can't wait to wear these socks. You know, and the funny thing is, because I wear more compression socks because other issues, you know, mm -hmm. my swelling and that, um, I don't wear my hand-knit socks all that much. And I love mm -hmm. them, but these will be worn. My favorite colors, pink and gray and lime green. Mm -hmm. So, cool. I did these, um, it's a Lisa Ross pattern. It's. It looks like just, what do they call it, a broken rib? Yeah. Because it's, it's... Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl two on one row, and then the next row the, you knit those two pearls. Oh, So okay. it's kind of a broken rib with the pearl bumps in there, or a, mm -hmm. a, I don't know, beaded rib maybe is what they call it. I don't know. Okay. But um, there was, the, the pattern came with a, a traditional heel and gusset. Okay. A slip stitch, you know, slip stitch. Heel, heel flap. Heel yeah. flap and gusset, that's what I was trying to say. I did a, a fish lips kiss because I love that heel on my foot. Mm -hmm. And I like to do fish lips kiss when I do um, contrasting. So I got some Cascade. Okay, really? Mm -hmm. Perfect match. Because this in here is not the Cascade. That is the gray that was in the sock, or self-striping. Mm -hmm. So this is a boot heel sock by mm -hmm. Show Me Yarns, and it was the ZK colorway from last year. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they do it. And this is called Mace Stowed Away. And the whole story was they had the pink and green thing going from the prior year. And then they had the cat stowed away in the yarn. And the cat was gray. So they combined mm -hmm. it all. And that's where this colorway came from. At any rate, I thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. You know, who's, I mean, the cat stowed away in the yarn that they yeah, were bringing yeah. to the show. To the, Snuck to in the trailer. They had one of those clo all closed trailers. Yeah. yeah. So. At any rate, finished those this month. And then I have my Bridger Cowl that I finished. Um, this is knit in, it's called Moonlight Sonata Knit Circus Yarn. It's got some silk in it. It's a worsted weight. Yeah. Bridger Cowl. All of us from the shop see are knitting a Bridger Cowl to wear to ZK. So this is mm -hmm. mine. Finished that. I've had a busy month. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. So we can't right. tell anybody. Here it is. 
hang on to that. Okay. Ah. Uh, there it is. Very pretty. It is fun. This is, oh gosh, brain fart, what can I say? By Amber O'Brien, Cherie Chevron. So it's a Chevron pattern. What I did was I used some um, So Happy Jane that we got at Ann Bud. Mm -hmm. And the pattern calls for these alternating chevrons with a mohair. And so this is Kid Silk Haze, I think it's called. Okay. Yeah. And it, but this one is one of the variegated ones. So it starts out there, and then you get this great stripe with the pink and the blue in it. And then it goes back to the, the, the grays. All right. And then back down here, the pink and the blue again. Oh, yeah. And I love the way uh -huh. the variegated turned out with the speckle. Yeah. Of that. Okay. They Did really I know that go they were together? Nicely. They really do. I mean, it turned out even better than I thought. Now, this pattern can be knit alternating the, the mohair with the fingering. It can be knit, and you can do that like so, matching colors. Okay, yeah. this is really close match, but it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it literally perfect matching. Oh, you yeah. You know, like like uh, like a pink, and then mm -hmm. you've got that pink mohair out there. Mm -hmm. The pink and the pink that match perfectly. I've yeah. seen it knit that way. But I've also needed in two, seen it, seen it knit in two fingerings. You know, like all like contrasting, yeah. like maybe one solid and one speckle or variegated. Mm -hmm. And I've s seen it done that way too. And the pattern is written for both options. And I just love the way it turned out. I wore it Wednesday and I was giving, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I said on Thursday night when we were knitting, I said, ha ha ha, if you didn't see me Thursday or Wednesday, you uh -huh. would have seen it. Yeah. But um, I nice. love the way it turned out. So, um, and, and, and because it's not all mohair, I didn't bother, mm -hmm. the mohair around my neck didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. So I am very happy to, and excited to show this one today. Um, nice. Our learning goals for this one are learning to knit with mohair. There's something to be said. Oh, yeah. Um, learning to knit with mohair. Because, man, that stuff's slippery. Mm -hmm. And when I would do, I would take, it's the same repeat. You know, it's actually 16 rows of the fingering weight. 16 rows of the mohair. Your stitch count is going up and down mm -hmm. by eight stitches each repeat, mm -hmm. okay? That being said, eight stitches is not gonna have a huge impact on the amount of time it takes to knit the 16 rows of one color and the mm -hmm. 16 rows of the other color. However, it took me almost twice the amount of time to knit the mohair sections as it did the fingering weight sections because mm -hmm. The mohair is so slippery, and you got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. So, and mohair is so fine. Yeah, but it stays where it's knit. Yeah, it, it does. doesn't slip around. Like you're not going to get big stitches and little stitches. It'll stay just how it's knit. Yeah. So yeah, it is a little different to knit with. And so that's you know what I I thought was really important learning to do that. Also combining the the, the different yarns, mm -hmm. um, and then. In all of the, the mystery projects we've done, we've never knit an Ambo O'Brien. Okay. So I made an effort to, mm -hmm. that's kind of important. I like to have a different designer all sure. the time, you know, because yeah. different designers write patterns differently and mm -hmm. understanding the language and the structure of how a designer writes is critical mm -hmm. to being able to follow it. Yeah, I'm kind of a snob at the patterns I choose to knit myself because so many of them I just make up, but like, I know I did that Stephen West sweater, and I love the way he writes his patterns. And I did, before that, I did an Andrea Mowry sweater, and I love the way she writes a pattern. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of a snob. I like a good written pattern, or I won't do it. So it's nice to get that exposure so they can see the different styles yeah. that people write. Yeah. Well, and different and, people respond to different styles. Well, you know, and, and, and it's funny, because people talk to me about, like, um... You know, could you knit this? And I, I look at people and I say, you name it, I can knit it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing is, yeah. well, that's because I'm, one of my personal strengths as a knitter um, is being able to understand the text structure and the way patterns are written. And you got to be able to understand it f from different people if you're going to, 
knit from a pattern. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one that is going to start completely from scratch. Oh, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna knit a sweater and you know figure out my math as I go. I'm mm -hmm. not like that. I'm kind of a pattern follower kind of girl. Mm -hmm. And you know what, that's okay because I have yeah. nice finished objects that I yeah. am proud to wear. Sure. So I'll follow yeah. a pattern any day. Yeah. Um, I like to scribble on the backs of things. My, uh, excuse me, my patterns are a lot of scribbles when I start out. <laughs> that's okay. Well, I gotta hide this shawl now if you don't yeah. mind. Here. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta get Do you have any more FOs? Nope, those okay. are my last FOs. I did have so. a second one. This was a cowl we took that this I made for the retreat. And what I did is I made kits up for it, then everybody got a kit. And all this yarn is the different yarn I dyed. I know I've been talking about it, you know, onion, natural. This was the red onion, I believe. Um, coffee, avocado, red cabbage and baking soda. And it just goes on and on. This was some flowers. So you can see different, every section's got a different cable pattern. Um, I'm gonna publish this pattern after it's test knit by a couple people. I can ask all the people at the retreat since they all got a kit. Um, <laughs> and then I'll put it out in Ravelry once um, I have test knitters, you know, go through it. Um, yeah, I got some really cool patterns. Like that little zigzag there, that would be a cool sock. Yeah, it would. So I, I just got out a couple of stitch dictionaries and tried different um, cables, made some up, you know, started with their design, changed it as I went. So this was a lot of fun. You know, and the funny thing about this is you never talked about it. No. You were such a sneaky old babe. Yeah, I did that at home. Yeah. No wonder you, I was wondering, you were talking about your home knitting, this was a couple, oh gosh, mm -hmm. I want to say a good month ago already, you were talking about your home knitting, and I'm thinking, well, crap, she don't get much done at home. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I wasn't going to say that to you, but I'm yeah. thinking, I look at what I get done at home knitting wise, and I uh -huh. work full time, and I'm thinking, yeah. she don't get much knitting done at home, what the hell is she doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was my stealth project, and then. This is all cables, <coughs> so it takes a while. And I did it use does. the cable needle for everything. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, I have to knit a cabled um, scarf for an elderly gentleman that mm -hmm. um, volunteers at my school. And I want to knit just, just because this man is so kind and so nice, mm -hmm. and I would like to just knit him this beautiful, manly, gray wool scarf, mm -hmm. okay? And I found a pattern I liked. Um, oddly enough, it's an Andrea Mowry, um, and I like the pattern, but it's wider than I want, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, an elderly gentleman that I, they don't want this 10-inch wide scarf. Mm -hmm. They want something closer to 7 or 8, yeah. you know, and they don't want it this bulk around their neck. They want something that's going to fold nice yeah. and tuck underneath their coat collar. Mm -hmm. Um so I started thinking about it. Maybe I should just take a good hard look at this. Like this one might work mm -hmm. nice. X's nose. Yeah, and if you have these ribs on the side, that, that's going to help keep it flat. Well, and you know, and then if I just put did, some garter on the edge. Put some garter on the edge, and then went in like here and did these mm -hmm. pearl ridges or these stock, uh, ribbing ridges, if you want to yeah, call I it. Yeah, I think they're twisted. They look twisted. Twisted rib. Yeah, twisted rib here, and then just two sections of the cable yes this is see the this is the one we're talking about. about the x's and o's you can really see it's x's and o's on the camera that yeah you can nice. you know maybe i wouldn't want to do x's and o's for this elderly gentleman but the concept yeah you know um yeah there's another this did i do the steak horns you know what one would be cool this one i think is it called steak horn oh or? that is nice yeah yeah, so at any rate, I might just, instead of knitting the pattern that I was going to, mm -hmm. I might take one of these cables, modify the edges, put a couple repeats mm -hmm. in, and knit it that way. Yeah. You know, okay, so am I starting from a pattern? Yeah, hers. <laughs> you know, and I'll just take mm -hmm. the pattern you gave us and yeah. go with it. I so. did have another FO, Becky's Gloves, but it was her birthday on Tuesday. So did you get them both done? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, See, I she gave them to her at lunch on Tuesday. She came for Well, lunch. because last weekend you were a little nervous. Yeah. About getting me, am I going to get these finished? They were beautiful. Right. Yep. 
Well, maybe you can borrow them from Becky. I had one other FO too, Cora's mm -hmm. mittens, and okay. I gave them to her last night. Yeah. It was so funny. I measured the length of her hand and the width of her hand mm -hmm. because I hadn't measured her for a while. Yeah. And I said, you know, so, and I told her when I was measuring that I wanted to knit her mittens. Okay, now this kid's six, all right? And, and I mean, just, out, just says the goofiest thing sometimes. But it was just funny because she has been paying attention and is getting mm -hmm. more understanding of knitting principles. Ah, uh, measuring, you know? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And knitting things to fit. You know, she's getting that. Mm -hmm. At six. I'm creating a monster, I swear. Either that or I'm creating the next most famous knitwear designer. Maybe. I don't know, one or the other. But um, nonetheless, so I give her these mittens, right? It's just a basic. I use the Tin Can Knits basic mitten pattern, sure. okay? So it's free out there on Ravelry. It's nothing complicated. And I didn't put any fancy patterns. I, mm -hmm. I use this variegated yarn. I use the Knitted Wit. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, wool silk blend mitten for my granddaughter. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was She's getting yarn. cords on those babies. We're not losing them. But mm -hmm. anyway, so there was enough variegation in the yard that I didn't want pattern anyways. Right. So she puts this mitten on last night, and she's looking at her hand. And she mm -hmm. says, well, Grandma, you did fine. The length is perfect. They fit my hand. She says, but my thumb's going to have to grow a little bit. <laughs> Because it was uh, just this tiny tip of a uh -huh, thumb that, uh -huh. you know, but her fingers, you know, well, of yeah. course, you pull the mitten on, you can pull it on all the way that your sure. fingers are at the top. They actually, uh -huh. if you look where the cuff was, they were just a smidge long, but nonetheless, yeah. oh, she, holds, she holds up her thumb. But you're going to have, the thumb's going to have to grow a little bit. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So that's she loves cute. her mittens. I would have brought them along, but she took them. She built a fort with blankets and pillows downstairs mm -hmm. last night, and there were blankets, and I think she had Uncle Ryan and helping her because oh, uncle ryan okay. likes to do things big so she uh -huh. had uncle ryan in, and she had the furniture moved in the blankets draped over the furniture and she had little tunnels she could go with, and she had three entrances i'm thinking you know uh -huh. it, it reminded me of a beaver lodge you know? yeah <laughs> but anyway she took them and they were in her fort and there was no way i was crawling in that fort to get uh -huh. them this morning okay so eh, maybe some other day but i'm gonna knit yeah. a hat to match them but. okay yeah show them then yeah when you have it all so, so okay Whips, you want to go first or should oh. I? Whips. I only have two. Okay. Because I'm kind of being monogamous. So, this one is, oh, I don't need that ball. I need this ball, it's attached. And I need this. Okay. This one is called Just the Beat Getting Corner. It's knit on the bias. Okay. But you can see, I got to get this. Can you pull that down there? It's geometric, it's triangles, oh, yeah. made with knits and pearls. Cool. Okay, and it's called Colorful Geometry. Uh -huh. So this is some Shalimar Breathless Deep, Deep, Deep Stash. I bought this yarn, I believe, at Stitches, like one of the very first times I went. Okay. And they had somebody who had Shalimar Breathless mm -hmm. when it was just hot and everybody had to knit Shalimar and Breathless. Mm -hmm. But these were what they called Lost Souls. And it was a dye that didn't take right or over yardage mm. under something was wrong with it like a second okay mm -hmm. so i bought this i love the way this gray is kind of irrigating up mm -hmm. i just love it and then in the pattern on the bias you have stripes of a set of minis or mm -hmm. mini skeins or leftovers whatever you got so you had the this is twizzlefoot yeah, the oh, set, yeah. the minis with the greens and the gray, mm -hmm. and that's what this is. So, so here's my problem with it. I just got the first row done, and gauge wise, I'm using a four. Yeah, these are fours. Um, the Shalimar is a bit beefier than, oh, than the, the minis than, than the Twizzle. The Twizzle is called a light fingering, and the you know, the the Shalimar is not called a heavy fingering, but in 100 grams, it's 370 yards. So, yeah, it, it is makes heavier, it, yeah. it is heavier. So, I don't know. I'm going to knit the first green section. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't take long. There's only 87 stitches, mm -hmm. and it's knit on the bias, so you're going to have a lot of 87-stitch repeats, but whatever. Um, I'm going to knit the first green section and decide if I like the two next to each other. Mm -hmm. If not, 
I'll find something else. I'm sure yeah. I can find something. I'm not going to give up on my gray because I love the way the this is The gray gauge is close to um, itty bitty. If you do need to look for something else, itty bitty is like that. It says it's a fingering to me. It's more like a sport. It's from Canada and it's got cashmere in it too. Oh. So that might go nicely with that if you need to find something else. Yeah. But at any rate, I, I mean, I, I, I started this the other day mm -hmm. and I just played, you know, got the yeah, first part done and beautiful. I love that. You know, and mm -hmm. this is the, the, the gray part is what the center is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So you, and then you do the striping on the other end again. So it's called okay. colorful geometry. Very nice. Okay. So that's that one. And then this one's almost done. I got, I have a bit to go. It's, it's a cowl. It's called earth shine. Okay. Oh. So you start out, it's just, knit, you start out knitting flat and then when it's long enough, you connect and go in the round. Mm -hmm. And then you start out with your, your main color is my gray, and then you do the pearl ridge mm -hmm. um, or the garter ridge with the contrast. And then when you get to the middle here, you got some garter ridges. I don't know if you can see that. And then you go back to, you switch your colors. So mm -hmm. now I'm on the last of the stockinette section. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, eight rows of garter. And that's it, Very then nice. it's done. So, and this is knit in a really woolly wool. Yeah. Yeah. It looks kind of beefy. Yeah. Um, it says it's a uh, DK. Okay. But I think you could be knit worsted too. Sure. So, but this could be a nice warm, thick cowl too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's called Earthshine by Hilary Smith Callis. Oh, okay. So, the, yeah, this is almost done. Mm -hmm. And the yarn is. Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, this is the thing, this is, I think they call this a woolen spun. There's this thing out there now that I never knew anything about, woolen mm -hmm. spun and worsted spun. Let's see. No, it goes the same way as this. So what's the difference? It'll see how the, the angle is like this on the yarn. Uh huh. The woolen spun, it'll be like this. And so then when you knit it, instead of mushing it down, it fluffs it up or whatever. Okay. So, but it, yeah, I just always look at a couple of them together and see if the angle of the yarn is the same way. Well, I never knew there was such a thing. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, this is definitely a woolier wool. You know? Yeah. It's got this light, puffy eeriness to it. Yeah. Where, you know, or maybe it's... And it's only a two-ply, it looks like, too. Well, Shall here's an end. Yeah. No, I got more plies than two. Well... You can see. Yeah, can it is see. a two-ply. Yeah. But, well, actually, it's two plies twisted together, and then those two plies are twisted together. Oh. Looking at this. Okay. Yeah, because I could separate... I could separate this. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's two plies it's that two are a little plies. thicker. Yeah. I don't know. But nonetheless, it's going to be a nice, win it, nice beefy cowl. Mm-hmm. Very nice. So that's what I'm working on. Okay. I'll pull out my works in progress. Well, first I have a Bridger cowl. I started oh. this at retreat. Yeah. This. Okay. This same is, pattern as this. Yeah. This but is it's amazing. Really cool. Same pattern, but she, you've got okay. the mohair. I, yeah. Mohair and the sequins. That and so... These are the yarns, I'm holding them together. It's turning Amazing. out really cool, but it kind of makes me stuffed up and itchy when I use the mohair. So I only do a little bit at a time. But I will have, I won't wear it to ZK because of that, but I will have it here in the store for a model. But yeah, I you love that. You want something that. sparkly, fancy. This is just beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Very soft and yeah. And the sequins don't poke. They're, I don't know what they're made of, but feel them. They don't poke at all. No. No, they're real soft. They, yeah. You know what? I think it's because they're small. And they're spun right in that yeah. yarn. Yeah, yeah. And then in between, though, there's also a metallic thread that I think just yeah. is reflecting. It's just the way these uh -huh. two are put together. I just it, love that. Yeah. Now, where you come up with this stuff, Jill? Jeez. Yeah. I know. I Here. got secrets. No. <laughs> Okay, 
And um, the next thing I'm working on is I'm doing a sweater for my son-in-law. And it's color work. It's bottom up. So oh. I'm at the bottom. I, this stuff's knitting really quick. I only have a couple days at, of 200 stitches. And yeah, it's going to be really nice. So it's bottom up. It's called Sadari or something. I love this pattern. It's not my own. It's my, it's, oh, Re Redari. This is the pattern. And I love it because there's like a chart and all the instructions are on this, on one page besides the chart. So it's, Best way to yeah. knit. I, I like that. Okay. Some people don't. So it's intended to roll like this before yes. the ribbing, isn't yes. it? Yes. This is kind of cool edge on the bottom. So think this is the bottom and I'm holding it upside down. Yeah. But there's ribbing in the brown, but uh -huh. the, the gold rolls on right. purpose. Yep. And I like that edge. And that's going to be at the neckline and cuff also. Well, I, you know, this would be another option for my crazy sweater, doing mm -hmm. an edge like this. Well, wait till I show you the next work in progress. Oh, no. Did yeah. I see this one either? No, this is my home project. Ah. So I brought it in. I don't always bring my home projects in, but just for these lovely folks, I brought it in today. My home project. Oh, is this your peach one? Yep. Oh, I gotta see this. Here we go. All right, this one took some thinking and um, let me show you. It's lovely, lovely, lovely yarn. It's Diva from Leading Men. Oh. So that has silk in it. It has a sheen. Now look at this neckline. It has the rolled neckline. Let me tell you, I'm starting with the same pattern as this. But I had this dilemma. You know, I don't always like picking up right on this edge. It's I don't sometimes, either. Sometimes, you know, you get holes. So what I did here is I started with the ribbing. And then I did short rows. So I had to do a little diagram in the back, and math. Short rows, you mean to raise the neck? Yeah, see okay. here's the front. The front is only this high. Here's the back, it's this high. So, okay. Yeah, so there is some short rows there. Because of the short rows, my coloring got off a little. Oh, whatever. Is that I have two rows, two well, you're rows increasing for a while. Anyways. Because what I'm doing is I'm helically knitting these two balls together. Oh my gosh. Because that gives me the color I wanted when you mix them together. Oh, my okay. gosh. And then for the increases, I'm doing yarn overs with two little tiny cables in between the yarn overs of, you know, two stitches wide. I've seen that. That's on the Hugo. Remember the Hugo mm -hmm. poncho? That, they did the two cables like that, but they did make ones. I wanted the yarn overs so that I could have a ridge of holes here. That's the only oh my god special interest in this pattern that I'm going to do is that set of holes. Everything else will just be straight stockinette. I could do this with my funnel neck. Yes. On my crazy sweater. Now to do this edge, I used an old Norwegian cast on. Yep. So it was stretchy, and I think did I do three? I think I did four rows. Yeah, four rows of stockinette to roll over. So yeah, so did I even bring it? No, I just had some scribbles and I drew my neckline and I knew it needed 58 in the back. Oh, give me a break. Yeah, <laughs> so I just had all these scribbles and figured it out how I had to do my short <coughs> rows. Because you got the raglan increases going on the same time as the short rows. So you have to have a picture. But the short rows start right in front of your raglan increases. They start right here's the first one. Right here's the first one. Okay, you know, do you just knit them narrower and get wider then? Or do yeah. you start wide? Yeah. Yeah, because the first of all, I'm one pass, okay. one pass, then two pass, two pass, and then three pass, and then okay. I was done. I thought I had to go three pass a couple of times, but no, I got down to only this much space between the short rows. I said, I guess I'm done. Okay, so thinking this through, because, okay, my mind is on my crazy sweater, even though that's gorgeous and I uh -huh. should tell her that, but yeah. my mind is on my crazy sweater. So what I got to do on my crazy sweater is, one, I could use that cast on or that neck edge 
make my uh -huh. ribbing longer. Uh -huh. Oh, here we go. Uh -huh. It's class time almost. Yeah. Make my ribbing longer. All right. Uh -huh. But I, and then do my short rows between my raglan increases. Okay, after I uh -huh. get my ribbing as high as I want. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, and then go back to the round. So then the next thing I yeah. gotta figure out is what how I want my increases to look like on my right, raglan. Right, right. Do you want make ones? You want yarn overs? You want knit front and back? Do you want to stitch between them? Sometimes just a uh, twisted rib, like three stitches between your increases. That looks kind of neat too. I think there's some suggestions in that Ann Bud book on different patterns to do for your raglan increases. Okay. So look in there. So, but yeah, this was my my collaboration. I like the helical going on in that. Yeah, yeah, you can't do helical while you're doing short rows because you go that way oh, in the back. See that in so the back it's of the neck. so in the back it's two by two and you can kind of see it a little, but yeah, when you're in the front, where my front, you can't tell. I didn't. I don't have my swatch here. You can't tell that it's two balls of yarn, really. You swatched? Yeah, this is the one I swatched in the round. Oh, and duh. cut. <laughs> yeah, I swatched it flat first, just to uh, see what needle I wanted to use. I chose a three with this yarn. That makes sense. Um, and then I went in the round because I wanted to see what the helical striping looked like. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. That's my work in progress for home. So that's all I have for works in progress. Wow. I guess she's pretty busy. Two sweaters yeah. on the needles. Yeah. You know, I mean, really, when you think about it, two sweaters yeah. on the needles at once, that's crazy. Well, I think that worsted weight one is going to go fast. Because look how far I am with only a couple days working. I've already got yeah. like four inches. So. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Hmm. So what's new in the shop? We got to talk about quick. Yeah. We got a lot of different notions and gadgets in. Um, one of them is these cute little scissors. There's four different styles. You can look at those. Oh, little scissors. When you cute stop scissors. in, yeah, the lady scissors. Um, you have some gadgets I'll let you show, but quick I'll show too. We got more of the sesame yarn, and this stuff is wonderful. It's about half gone already from what we got in. So, it's been walking out the yeah, door. Yeah, I will order now a third time. Um, two colors aren't going as fast, but, I mean, I th think they're still pretty. But yeah, I'll order all the other colors that are sold out already or nearly sold out. Okay. So what do you have? I have some Knitter, Knitter's Pride. I love the fact that Knitter's Pride came up with pattern holders that are pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay? I've got a basic black one. How boring. I'm not mm -hmm. a boring black person. No, I like the patterns. And what they mm -hmm. do is they've got the fabric. So this is your pattern holder if you're working from a chart. I like those. And then... They came up with cute little needle cases. And these needle cases have pockets. Put all your needles in the pockets. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who have lots of needles, mm -hmm. having them in pockets is a nice idea. Yeah. So um, that's what I got here to show. I like these. I have like two or three of these actually. Okay. Or no, two or three of these and one of these. None okay. of mine match, so. Oh well. Yeah, I got that pattern. And there's other patterns you can get too. Yeah. Um, I got Nothing special order. Let's on. see. I got this one. Okay. Yeah. But I like the striped green one too. Roxanne has one that's even different than these. Hers is blue, but it's not that one. Huh. So anyway, they're yep, fun. There's lots of other gadgets came in. So um, yeah, come in for that. And I'm just gonna hold up my Selbu mitten again. I love this mitten. There's mm -hmm. the back. Anyways, the reason I'm holding it up again is we do have a class on how to knit these coming up February 22nd. Mm -hmm. And so... I put it at 10.30 instead of 10 o'clock. I hope that's okay with you. Fine. Okay. Yeah. I have to bowl later in the day, but 10 o'clock will be just fine. 10.30. 10.30 will be just fine. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. So, but that's coming up. So join us for that class. That'll be yep. fun. Um, they're, these are just fun to knit. Mm -hmm. Just fun to knit. Yeah. So. Okay. I think that's, that's all we all got. I the have. table is now empty. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank we'll you. talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.